Hello, welcome to this tutorial with Light Tracer 2.5, enabling Light Tracer to create very professional animations, formats with animations in your files. Light Tracer can read those animations. You can use a timeline and keyframes to render these animations. I want to create product render animation, jewelry animation. So we're going to do this as practical example. So let's get started. You can just drag and drop your object. Default settings are good. Let's group object with the same material. Replace here. So it's going to load my object. This is the rose ring that I designed last week. If you haven't seen the tutorial, go check it out. Obviously, it's a GPU based render engine. So it's really fast. We have an amazing library of materials, AGRIs and lights. Check this out. We have studio lights. You can bring any configuration you like. You can load images. You can create your own studio lights. And uh, well, and all the AGRIs here, this is integrated in Light Tracer, but obviously you can load any HRI you like. And all the materials, there are thousands of materials with a CC0 license. So all these materials are for any professional project and you can choose the format and resolution you want to use. Obviously you need a good internet connection. So that's for the basics. You can create a transparent background, which is amazing because if you want, you can bring a floor. Let's bring a square floor here. And that floor is only a shadow catcher. Obviously, if I want, I can also have a glossy catcher. So you catch the reflections. We can assign any material to this floor. So here there's a search tool and that's very practical. I want some clay here, here assigning the clay material to the ground. Obviously from here, we can go to properties and we can configure the material as needed. Here we have all the maps, the scales. Well, let's say I want it slightly more reflective with less roughness, maybe less with 0.7 for the roughness. Now I want less bump. So here the strength of the bump, let's go 0.1, very subtle bump on the floor. And this is great for, now the floor is too small. Let's make, let's go to a transformation tool, three times bigger. Now, something you need to know, there's an amazing physics simulation tool here in transformations down here, there's the physics engine. So the ground is static. Let's select the ring and let's make it dynamic. I'm going to move the ring here. So it's going to calculate the holes for collisions. You can make it more accurate. Okay, obviously, don't forget to set the gravity factor. If you want something to fall, you need some gravity. And here it goes live. The amazing thing is that we can make objects collide together. So before I do that with a copy of the ring, let me set the materials for the ring and we'll play with that feature in a moment. Don't forget to save the scene library. I want some gold now. Okay, so this is yellow gold. Obviously, like I said, we can tweak any material later. We need some diamonds. So diamond in Light Tracer is really nice because it has the dispersion effect, the small rainbow colors, you know, well, that's called dispersion. Well, let's go for a ruby. So let me tweak this just a bit. I want to tweak the gold material here. So select the node, that's the object. Okay, I want to change the color slightly. I want it to be a bit warmer. The gemstone, the ruby, I want it to be lighter. Okay, the floor, let's select the same floor. Let me remove, let's detach the map for the ground. What I can do is change the color. Let's bring it to a slight green. Okay, fantastic. Let's save. Now what I'm going to do is a copy. So let's select the ring here and here I can make a copy right there. Create a new setup with the two rings. So I'm going to rotate them anyway. So I'm going to move them up because I'm going to use the physics engine to... Okay, so the gravity factor is at one. Now also down here, let's put the accuracy up. These objects need to be dynamic. The floor is static. Oh, and something important. So let's go to multiple selection here and with control, let's select these two rings. Now let's go again to physics. Here, let's select the floor and the rings and they're going to accommodate thanks to the physics engine. The accuracy is not the highest yet. So what I'm going to do is use, well, let's use the highest possible precision. We're almost there. All right, here and let's turn the dynamic system off again. And we see that the calculation is really fast. So this tool is really to help designers set their objects in a more natural way. This, and this is an amazing feature with the full accuracy. I want to check that it's not overlapping. This is great. And now this is pretty great for the render. We can do a lot of settings right here. So here, the depth of field, let's choose the focus on the back ring right there. Okay, this is pretty nice. Let's even have two. So we have some depth of field. Now the bloom, you, you can obviously tweak the bloom. I want you to add some bloom. So obviously you can turn the bloom off. Most of the time the bloom gives a bad taste effect. Honestly, you should know that. But in this case, this design goes very well with the bloom here. Obviously if you move the camera, don't forget to set the focus again. And uh, something very important down here, max bounces, because this is jewelry, we need a lot of refraction. Let's go with max bounces at the top right there. Also don't forget to check your resolution. I'm going to do a full HD. So if you want for the render, don't forget that you can set the samples up there. I want you to go at 250 for the animation. And don't forget to set the denoiser to your favorite denoising. I prefer the Intel Secure denoiser. Okay, you can check the samples here. And you can add a watermark if you need to add your logo or anything to the animation or to the render, obviously. This is it. Okay, so this is pretty good for a render. 
Okay, so we're going to work with the animations. Here, as always, we already have turntable and swing, and now actually we have keyframe. And also the entire timeline system and animation system has been renewed. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to do a turntable animation. Here you can set the amount of rotation and the length of the number of seconds you need for your animation. Okay, so here I need to set the rotation center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to keyframe. I'm going to add one keyframe right here. And now if I move the view, well, actually the white spot there is the rotation center. Now if I move the camera, it doesn't matter because I can go back, I can restore the view here, and it restores depth of field and the position obviously we can check the coordinates of the center if necessary preview for you which is very practical oh and before i proceed any further i'm going to add some light source here i would like more shadow let's go to library let's add a light i'm going to add a pretty strong light of this kind okay so obviously this is way too strong but also i need to find a position okay from here maybe and here we can tweak the strength and the color temperature of the light okay and the angles and all of that you can tweak the position as you like because what i want to tweak also is the hdr rotation okay this is pretty good but i'm going to turn the power of the hdr a bit more. also something very important that has changed is that now we can use the sky dome and the sky dome is going to project the shadows depending the position okay otherwise it would be a fixed sphere and your shadows would always be the same not the reflections but the shadow so when you want to tweak your render to a backplate let's say a landscape for a car by example you would use the sky dome obviously the same for jewels if you want to set your jewels on the back plates you're going to use the sky dome so you get the shadow and you can tweak the shadow to that specific image right okay let's go back to the animation here and let's make a preview of the turntable here okay here i need to tweak the rotation center you can do it from the scene from an object from the focus point okay so let's create a cube right here and now what we're going to do is that we're going to tell the camera to set the rotation center to that cube right here so the ring doesn't come off the screen down here and there this is great now let's go back to the initial view and let's select the cube and here in light tracer we can make it invisible very simply here and this is it so here i can wait for the render to complete it's very fast like this here i can save the view as png jpeg hdr so i have already a render and i'm ready to render the turntable so it's very easy to do that let's go to render frame i want png sequence let's create a new a new directory here let's call it frames and let's call it turntable okay enter. and now it's going to render so obviously check that all your settings are good and you'll be fine so i'm going to render a turntable and then i'm going to do a couple of pass by using the new keyframe system all right all right so now that we've made the turntable animation which is really simple here let's talk about the best new feature around here the keyframes in light tracer 2.5 so let's go to keyframes so here we have the view slot so actually i already did one keyframe and the nice thing is that it sets the camera position and angle and everything and depth of field okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move move let's say here let's come here let's make a close-up obviously let's go to settings let's go to set the new focus point right here okay and let's go to animation and let's add the keyframe here or a view slot view slot number two here we can set the duration and the ease in and ease out so I want, let's say, four seconds. It's a 24 frame per second animation. So here it is. And now we can preview. We can preview this animation. So it goes from one keyframe to the other one. It's very simple, but very efficient. Because obviously you have all the transition between the depth of field of the first view slot to the second view slot. And you can preview each frame if necessary here. If you didn't like the result, you can simply remove this one. And let's say I want to go to the other side. So let's go back to animation. And let's add the view slot right here. And now let's say here, I don't want to be up there. I want to, let's maybe set... The depth of field the focus point here perfect now let's add plus but this one i need it higher okay right there so let's go for the preview so now the durations so let's change the durations let's go at three and let's go at six and let's put the middle point right there so i keep the same rhythm from one side to the other and this is great and like i said it's very simple but very efficient because this gives us full control no cars jewelry product design architecture anything you like so once you have this set properly, let's again render frames. PNG obviously puts a new name. Let's fly by. So this fly by, and it's going to render. And maybe what I'm going to do, but just for let's cancel this this one. I'm going to save, but I'm going to save as a different scene because I'm going to change. I want to change. Let's remove this image right there. Let's remove it. And now I'm going to change the color of the floor and the material of the floor. Okay, let's go to library materials. I want some marble. So I can drop right here and let's make it a lot smaller. Point one right there okay this looks great let me tweak it to my liking which means that i do want some metallics maybe at the point okay, this is great and what i'm going to do is change i'm going to change I'm going to object nodes right there the objects okay i'm going to change this color to and now i'm going to make this gold i'm going to make it white gold so let's go to 0.9 white gold there so that one here at the back i'm going to make it different i'm going to make it more like an amethyst view and let's start the animation you can remove the menus anytime you like 
Okay, here, so just fine tweaking this amethyst here, so I can lower the density if needed. This is pretty nice, maybe clearer here, and yeah, let's go back with a stronger color. So what I can do is the diamonds on the side here, I can give them some color, let's make them pink, and let's give it some density. Let's go point, maybe more, let's go point seven. Okay, this is pretty nice, and let's make the color lighter here. So we have some pink diamonds on the side of this. We're ready to render this flyby. This is pretty neat, don't forget to save. So I save different files for each animation. Here we are, and let's go to animation, render frames, PNG. Let's go to the frame folder, and let's call this flyby. Okay, and let me render. This is going to take like 30 minutes, because I want a peridot gemstone. I don't want an emerald gemstone. Okay, anyway, so let's fine tweak your gemstones. Get realistic colors. That's exactly where people who are not jewelers, jewelry designers, or gemstone trained people fail almost every time. So that's why you need a lot of training to make jewelry rendering, right? Okay, actually, I like this frame as for a render. This is pretty nice. Okay, now here, let's... Okay, now here, let's tweak the IUR. Perido is 165. Okay, dispersion is zero, basically, in Perido. It has no dispersion. Okay, the, the amethyst is 155. And let's put a very low, very slight. Very, very slight. Okay, so the color is perfect. IUR is correct for all the gemstones. Very important. Let's go to... Animation, render frames, PNG. I have already many frames because I was running some tests. So let's save your frames, let's save your animation, and I lowered the sampling to 125. I'll be back in a minute.